Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at the extension Space Finder. So Space Finder is an extension that is available from the SketchUp team, and it's a cool little extension that goes through your structure, your building, and identifies spaces in the floors. Um, so when I'm talking about spaces, I'm talking about like a room or a section of a building uh, and it allows you to go in and put information in there and even export some data about square footage and that sort of thing. It's pretty cool, it's pretty easy to use and we're gonna check it out right now. All right, so here, this is the Extension Warehouse page. It is available for free to download and install. Um, it's available through SketchUp Labs. You guys have heard us talk about SketchUp Labs before. A cool place that the SketchUp team is to put up uh, different extensions or, or additional functionality and you get to try it out. So let's take a look at how this works. It is a very easy to use extension. So I have a structure here. Um, I've used this on some other videos too. Uh, very basic, very simple. I have stuff broken apart into uh, different groups based on uh, how I want to see the data in this in this structure. Um, pretty simple structure though. I mean, it's not, not nearly as many uh, tags as I've seen in production drawings, but I just want to see that it is, is broken apart. Everything's in different groups, top floors, bottom floors, that kind of thing. So let's take a look at what happens when we run Space Finder on this. So I'm going to go to extension. There's one thing here. I'm going to hit it and it's going to bring up the Space Finder extension. So the only thing in here, it does, it does give you a quick walkthrough of how to do this. It is really a find or what you know walk down the path there's not a, a plot, whole lot of places to get lost so i'm going to go ahead and hit find spaces we'll see this analysis setting again i'll talk about that once we get in there um but i'm going to go ahead and hit find spaces it is going to give me a question error once i come in here so uh this is not not going to change your results or anything but it is good information that uh we get to you know take in and take a look at what what are people using it for that sort of thing so please do fill this out real quick the first time you do it especially and uh yeah it's uh it's a good a good way for us to know what's going on all right so when we get done we get a couple of things we get this ui that comes up that shows us the spaces it found and we also if you see it in the back my model changed a little bit um it did go through and it did a couple things. One is it gave me a new view. This view is everything's wireframe except for the identified floors and spaces. See that? And then it also gave me uh, a new tag in here called a tag folder called SketchUp Spaces. If I expand that, it'll give me a new, another folder inside there for each floor. And then in each floor, it will have each of the spaces that it found. So let's take a look at what it found. And I'm gonna do that. I could do that through here where we could kind of buzz through the model. It's a cool representation, but really the, uh, the UI that is in the extension is a better way to do this. So if we flip through here real quick, um, I have a couple of options. Uh, the, tag, the tabs up at the top, floors, types, and groups. Uh, groups are created. So if I wanna pull a bunch of spaces together, I can manually create groups. Types are going to be the different types that show up once I have assigned them. So right now I haven't assigned anything, so it's all marked as unassigned. And then, of course, floors, floors, each floor that identified. So this is a two-story building, no basement. So this is the first floor. Then the second floor is up above. You will see these, how, what would it call it, unusable spaces. So these are, are potentially I could get into, but they're less than the headroom I decided is the, the maximum. So they get marked with this kind of candy striping. Um, this is over the garage. So this would potentially be attic space. So, and then of course on the top, I have a bunch of spaces right here identified. These are all above the second floor. So this is all attic space. Um, what I can do with this then is I can actually come in here and I can say, okay, let's put some tags on here. Let's call out what these things are. So right here, I know this is a garage space. So I'm gonna pick it. And when I pick it, I get this little fly out right here. This lets me actually toggle it. Do I want to see it or not see it? Or do I want to actually come in here and ignore it? I don't want to ignore it. I want to assign it. I'm going to click assign. And the first thing it's going to do is going to give you a list. And this threw me off the first time I saw it. But these are basically uh, classifications. So in this case, this is a residential building. 
Then I have a couple different options for residential. This is a single family. And then it gets into what are the actual tags it can apply. So I'm gonna say, okay, this one is a garage. Now that's my garage space. And uh, as I look through here, let's, let's add some more spaces. Um, I don't remember what a lot of these spaces are. I think this is a, this is a, uh, like a living room back here. So we're gonna go ahead and assign that. I'll go down. You'll see that when you come back in here, it does remember what subfolder you're in for tags. So I can just drop right down. I'll put that as living room. Uh, this is like a kitchen dining room space. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that and put kitchen right there. And then here we have maybe it's a uh, kind of a office space. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign that. This is a hallway assigned. So it goes pretty quick once I once I get into uh, assigning the different pieces. It's it's pretty easy to do. Um, back here I have some storage spaces, like a pantry kind of thing. So I'm gonna call that storage. Uh, this maybe I think is a laundry room or something like that. I don't remember. I don't have laundry room as a type under residential single family, but if I go back to residential, we'll go to multifamily, and there I do have laundry room. It's not going to force you into, it's not gonna say, oh, this is for part of multifamily. This, this tag will go along with it just fine, even though uh, laundry room came from a different spot. That's all right. Um, again, some of these spaces I don't remember. I think this is, might be a bathroom. I think this is a bathroom right here. So let's go ahead and assign that. That's gonna be, I'm gonna go back to residential, single family. We'll call that a bathroom. Uh, these are actually stairs. Um, so I don't have a, a, a stair stairway in here, but I could call that a void or a shaft space. Um, all right, then I again I don't know what some of these spaces are. Um, we'll call this little little nook right here. Maybe this is this is a, a, an equipment room. I, that that could be where my stuff goes. Um, there we go. So once that's done, now if I did come over here to types, I could actually see and highlight the different types as I go through it. That same process I go through for my, my second and third floor. Again, like I said, with these spaces that are maybe up in the attic, I could always grab them. I can actually uh, come through and assign through this list over here on the side too, if this is quicker. So here's my 300s. I can click assign type, attic, uh, assign type, attic. And I could actually go through and, and, and assign each of the unassigns quickly that way if I wanted to. Um, either way works, either way gets you the same thing. You, I did mention how these candy stripe spots aren't getting called out. So in my settings, I do have some options here like what is the minimum ceiling height? So anything that's under 1.8 meters high is gonna get that stripe on there as unusable space. If I wanna count that in attic space a little bit higher, maybe I wanna say anything under like one meter, I could slide that down, refine the spaces, and then uh, it would actually mark those differently. Um, so once I get each of these, let's see if I can talk and assign to attic at the same time. Not so well, no, I'll be honest, not, not, it's, it's not, I'm not, not that quick at that. Um, but once I get that assigned, uh, a couple things are gonna happen. So one thing is out here in the model, you'll see that those colors are showing up over here in my spaces view. And my spaces view can be toggled on and off too, by the way. It is, it is a scene that happens. So if, if I want to, I can jump back to my normal model view and jump back into spaces view. These different colored spaces, these rectangles are saved in here into this tag right here. So I can actually toggle them on and off too. You might notice if I come in here, um, so you can see, yeah, see, see the flickering of my floor. There's those two, two, the space and my flooring fight. I could turn spaces off and then that will go away. So that is an option. But yeah, so I have the option of visualizing here in my model if I want. And then of course, uh, more useful information, I can come over here and I can actually see what's my square footage for each of these. Um, I can take that information manually or I can actually export it. So I can export, I can click right here, it will give me a spreadsheet, breaking all these down by level, by type, uh, with the footages, all that will go out. Um, and so I do have my visualized square footage. It is listed right here. That does include my attic space. So I would want to ignore that if I don't want that included in my numbers. But uh, yeah, pretty quick, pretty easy. And I have this not just totaled, tallied, counted, but included too. Something you will notice, notice there's a space between the walls. So it actually does just grab that square footage and not 
the spots that I that goes underneath the wall. So it is the actual usable square footage in the model. So like I said, it is a very quick and easy to use extension. Um, learning it takes about 10 minutes. Uh, how you wanna use that, that's up to you. Where are you gonna do with those that information? Export it, that sort of thing, give it a try. It's a free extension, so it is an extension. You do need uh, SketchUp for desktop to run it. But if you have any questions, my recommendation would be go try it. It is super simple. It is very easy to use. Um, yeah, I, it's, there's there's a little bit deeper. There's a couple things you do if you have custom room types. You can actually create a CSV file and import that. Um, but there's not a whole lot more to it. It is just very simple and easy to use. So go check it out. Try it out. Come back here. Let me know what you found, how to use it, some use cases you have, or, or if you have uh, recommendations. There is a button in there, that Labs button on the screen. You can click that and you can actually recommend directly to the people who make it which is a great way to get your input. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week. You'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, leave us a comment down below. Have you already tried this extension? What do you think of it? Uh, do you think there's some other extensions we should look at on this, in these videos? Or do you have another idea for a totally different kind of video? Leave us a message down below. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.